Hello and Namaste. Today we'll be having a class on basics of acid-base balance. I am Dr. Apiksha Nirola, currently working as an assistant professor in Department of Biochemistry at BP Kolara Institute of Health Sciences, Tehran. So the objective of today's class will be mainly discussing on uh, the basic concept of what is an acid and what is a base. Uh, what is the henderson hasselbalch equation, which uh, is the major uh, formula which regulates the acid-base physiology in our body, which is used to um, measure, and how is this acid-base balance maintained by uh, different types of our um, uh, protective mechanism, that is by the chemical buffers, uh, role of the lungs in acid-base balance, and the permanent uh, regulation by the renal system, and what are the clinical implications which is related to this acid-base balance. So, uh, before moving on to the topic proper, we'll be knowing about importance of acid-base homeostasis in uh, our body. We all know that our body, we are every minute struggling with or we are fighting to uh, maintain the uh, acid-base balance by fighting with the protons, that is we are getting rid of the protons and uh, conserving the base. So the uh, importance of H plus is that the importance of the proton or your acid, it should be always under control so that our pH of the blood remains within the normal range. It's so amazing that our cells, they release around 50 to 100 millimole of proton, that is H+, into the extracellular fluid daily. Now, where is this H+, coming from? It is mainly from the foods we are taking, the metabolism which is undergoing in our body. All of them, that is majority of them, are liberating acids. So, uh, from every point of time in our body, whatever reaction is happening, we have H plus ions released in our body and the concentration is obviously higher. But if you see to the pH that which is the negative logarithm of uh, hydrogen ions, it is 7.4 which equivalents to 40 nanomole per liter of proton. That is from 50 to 100 production, we uh, it is maintained to 40 nanomole per liter. So it is a very um, amazing job done by the body with collaboration with buffer, lungs and the renal system to maintain the acid-base physiology. Before moving on to the pr topic proper, we'll be, um, uh, we will uh, know about the key terms which we'll be uh, learning throughout the class uh, uh, today. So the, these are the basic terms which comes in acid-base balance. The first term is the pH. pH is the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration. That is, what is how much is the hydrogen ion concentration? Higher the hydrogen ion concentration, the pH will be lower. Lower the hydrogen ion concentration, the pH will be higher. So our body pH is uh, at the range of 7.35 to 7.45, or it's uh, appro approximately uh, normal to be considered as 7.4, and and uh, the uh, pH is maintained by uh, having the balance between the acid and the base. So what is an acid? Acid, as we have heard about so many acids, which we also produce, the most common one is the strong acid, hydrochloric acid, we have acetic acid, phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid. All of these acids are considered to be acid because they can uh, donate a proton. So the, the, uh, the component which can donate protons are known as the acid and we have uh, the pH of this acid is if it has le it, uh, less than 7 we call it as an acidic medium or acidic substance. Then comes the base. Base are the protons acceptors or they liberate hydroxyl ion. So if you see uh, the reaction of hydro hydrochloric acid which is a strong acid which almost all of the um, acid gets dissociated, it donates uh, H plus in case of your hydrochloric acid. Similarly, we have bases like um, you have uh, sodium hydroxide which accepts this proton or they can um, uh, liberate your hydroxyl ion. So, uh, proton acceptor are bases while proton do donator are your um, acid. Now, uh, strong acids means the acid which completely dissociates like your hydrochloric acid, uh, your uh, sulfuric acid. These are the strong acids which dissociates completely while weak acids are the one which dissociates partially or incompletely and this there comes the importance of your dissociation constant. The most important weak acid which we tackle in our body is carbonic acid. Uh, strong base and weak base are again the same thing which uh, the one which dissociates completely are the strong and which dissociates partially or not completely or uh, around 50% of its concentration are considered to be the weak acid or weak base. Now, uh, we all know, uh, we have been knowing that our body has 
um, hydrogen ion concentration of 40 nanomole per liter while our uh, production which our body produces is 60 to 100 nanomole per liter so majority of your h plus which is produced is always excreted the body tries to excrete it either through carbon dioxide gas or in the urine in the form of ammonium ion or other acidic content in the urine so we are our body always tends to reserve the alkali and get rid of your acid so there is one term which is very important which is known as alkali reserve and this alkali reserve is, uh, is uh, more or less they are directing towards the bicarbonate which is always reabsorbed by the kidney so that our body pH balance is maintained. So bicarbonate which are available uh, to the neutralized uh, acids that is what is the concentration of the bicarbonate which is available to neutralize the acid which is going uh, on and on that is being produced on and on in our body and the range of this bicarbonate is 20 to 26 millimole per liter normal uh, values is 24 millimole, millimole per liter less bicarbonate means acidic pH more bicarbonate means alkaline pH and the, the next important thing which you we all should know about acid base balance is pKa value so if you see uh, suppose this is an uh, this is a very weak acid HA so if it dissociates it dissociates into a uh, acid and a salt so there the pH uh, pKa means at the pH at which a uh, acid dissociates to 50% of its original concentration that is uh, the pH at which your uh, acid uh, is half ionized is known as uh, your pKa concentration and this pKa concentration is very important to be known because um, the P, uh, if uh, your, as, uh, your buffer has the pKa it's around the pH of your body physiology it acts in the uh, more, most effective way so we'll be coming on to those topics later and the next important thing is a buffer buffer is at, is a combination or it, we can say it is a, it's a chemical substance which is made up of the weak acid or its conjugate strong base or a, a weak base with its conjugate strong acid which can resist change in ph for example we are taking a solution of a weak acid and a strong base um, so uh, your acetic acid and your uh, sodium hydroxide what happens is this combination uh, when they are uh, called to be a buffer suppose for example acetate buffer if we add an acid or a base whatever amount which can change the ph if uh, this is a substance which is a buffer it does not let the ph to be changed for example the ph of your um, uh, uh, ph of your acetate acetic acid is sup supposed to be 6.8 if you add more acid it is not going to change to 6 or it is not if you are adding more alkali it is not going to go uh, move higher so that is the main concept of buffer that is whatever amount of acid or base you are adding the buffering capacity of that buffer will not let the change in ph and which is the important thing to be uh, dealt on now coming on to the uh, further equation that we have we should be knowing is what is the henderson hasselbach equation and why we should know this so i have uh, given the concept of your what is a what is ph what is pka and what is a strong and a weak acid strong acid we are not going to uh, uh, calculate any formula for it because they dissociate completely these formulas are mainly for the weak acids which dissociates uh, um, or which dissociates partially or they are half ionized so this is the formula which is the um, which is known as the henderson hazelback equation which is given as ph equals to pka plus log uh, base or it is also called as salt by acid concentration so the base concentration is in the numerator and the acid concentration is at the denominator and this henderson hazelback equation is very important to know the uh, if to calculate the pK of the solu uh, pK of the buffer or the solution or the pH or any of the concentration if it is uh, missing we can know we can calculate if uh, the known if the concentration are given to the rest of the values and here if pH equals to pK according to Henderson Hazelback equation this denotes that the solution will be a best buffer now when the ratio of the dissociated and undissociated particle is same for example here this is the uh, component or a weak acid which is being dissociated 
so if the ratio of the dissociated and undissociated will be same so in that case ph will be equals to pk for example here a minus is your um, base or salt and this is the undissociated one this is the dissociated one so if it is same ph will be equals to pk and that is a sign for a good buffer or it shows that the buffer will have a very good buffering capacity at the physiological pH. So this dissociation constant here it is again given uh, actually this um, by this formula you can derive the henderson hazelback equation which we I won't be doing uh, now but you can see here uh, Ka is the dissociation constant that is how much is the uh, dissociated via divide by undissociated this will give you the Ka and uh, the logarithm uh, that is the pKa means the pH at which the substance is half ionized. Now that is the chant for the acid base biology that is acidity equals to bicarbonate by carbon dioxide. It means that A equals to B by CD. It means acidity that is pH is base means bicarbonate, CD means carbon dioxide. So now coming on to the body and pH. We all know that the homeostasis of your acid base uh, or your pH, H plus concentration is always tightly controlled. Your pH of the extracellular fluid is 7.4. The range, that is the physiological range of the blood pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Lower than 7.3 is called, the condition is known as acidemia or acidosis. Higher than 7.45 is known as alkalosis or alkalemia. Now, here you can see this, this picture uh, shows that how is our body uh, pH is maintained by so many things. We have 58% intracellular buffering that is inside the cell there are buffers and 42% extracellular buffering which is maintaining the pH in this small range of 7.35 to 7.45. Let's see what are these intracellular buffers. So in the tissue cells we have um, uh, mainly the phosphate buffer and then uh, in RBC you have the hemoglobin buffer and if you come outside that is an extracellularly we have 40% of the buffering which is done by the bicarbonate buffer and these are the proteins and uh, uh, your phosphate buffer in very slight amount that is 1%. So the, uh, the intracellular buffer the most important one is the phosphate buffer and then comes the uh, hemoglobin buffer and extracellularly we have the bicarbonate buffer. Now coming on to buffers, I've already talked about what is a buffer. Buffer is any chemical substances which is composed of weak acid or a strong base or vice versa which can resist a small change in pH. That is if you are adding more amount of acid or a base, it is not going to increase or decrease the pH of that buffer solution. Now. Uh, the buffer which we are mainly concerned uh, within our body which maintains our pH, the most potent one is the bicarbonate buffer and uh, we have phosphate buffer, protein buffer and hemoglobin as a buffer also which maintains the uh, pH intracellularly as well as extracellularly. Uh, you have bicarbonate buffer, acetate buffer, phosphate buffer, citrate buffer. These buffers they can also be used in uh, uh, in in vitro diagnostics or in lab where uh, uh, buffers are used to maintain the enzymatic uh, maintain the pH for enzyme to work for so many uh, other reactions to happen. Now, what do you understand by buffering capacity? So, buffering capacity actually it refers to the uh, capacity or ability of the buffer to resist the change in pH uh, by one unit whenever acid or base is added. That is how well it can resist the change in pH without changing its original pH by add addition of acid or buffer. So it defined as the ability of the buffer to combat or resist the change in the pH by changing one unit. Now coming on to how does this buffer act, so we'll be moving on uh, individually of uh, each buffer how this buffer act intracellularly, extracellularly that is um, by um, via lungs or via your erythrocytes also in my subsequent slides. Now this I've already talked most, most effective buffer is the one which has its pKa almost equal to pH of your body uh, that is the blood that is the physiological pH. Now this is the picture which shows that what is the normal pH, you can see this is the range for the normal pH, below this it is acidic, above it it is alkal, uh, alkali, so if it is increased, the pH is increased, it is known as alkalosis or it is also known as alkalemia, similarly acidosis or acidemia, these are the two important terms. Now coming on to um, how our body maintains or bicarbonate buffer, it maintains the 
uh, pH or how, why it is so important. Here you can see that whenever there is low pH or whenever there is more amount of hydrogen concentration or proton concentration, it means that we need to get rid of those hydrogen and absorb or reabsorb or reclimate your bicarbonate ions. Here, if your H plus is more, that is your pH is low and your H plus is more, your bicarbonate is always conserved or it is reabsorbed or the body tries to always maintain the concentration of the bicarbonate in a uh, high amount so that it can uh, cause the excretion of this H plus ion and maintain the pH to the physiological range that is do not let the reduction uh, pH to be uh, decreased. Similarly, if you have high pH, it means you have less H plus high bicarbonate, your body tries to get rid of this bicarbonate by converting it to H2CO3 where it is converted into CO2 plus H2O and it is exhaled in your air. So, uh, whenever there is low pH, bicarbonate is conserved, H plus is excreted. Whenever you have high pH, bicarbonate is uh, Get excreted that is uh, mainly through com uh, converting it into carbonic acid and converted uh, ultimately into CO2 and H2. So why we are concerned with uh, so much for the change in the pH and uh, what is the deleterious effect it can lead to. So small changes in pH can cause major disturbances mainly because most of the enzymes they function in the specific pH and so if there is a change in the pH be it acidic or alkali the uh, enzymes are uh, not functioning properly causing uh, majority of the effect in the metabolism of the body. So the, the second one is the purine and pyrimidines which are incorporated in the genetic material. They have their tautomeric and enol form. So the change into their structural configuration is changed uh, uh, in case of change in the pH that can lead to um, that can lead to uh, diseases or that can lead to uh, harmful effect in the health of the body, health of the individual, pH and the excitable tissue. The excitable tissue, they are uh, to large extent are associated or they are um, affected by the change in pH like in alkalosis or acidosis. Your excitable tissue, they are abnormally been uh, stimulated or inhibited that can cause uh, uh, pathological changes in the body. So acid-base balance can also affect uh, electrolytes. For example, your potassium, potassium is directly related with your uh, H plus ion and your chloride is directly related to your bicarbonate ion. So whenever there is acidosis, there is higher chances of having increase in the potassium leading to hyperkalemia in acidosis. Similarly, your HCO3 and uh, uh, chlorine, uh, in case of the loss of your um, bicarbonate or your body um, bicarbonate is not in the optimum amount, body type to, uh, uh, tries to reabsorb or maintain your chloride ion concentration to maintain the neutrality of the body. So that can also lead to hypochloremic acidosis. So there are a number of changes, uh, there are a number of changes if the pH is not maintained. So the, uh, the main thing which we have known till now is we need to excrete more amount of H plus and we always need to uh, reabsorb more amount of your bicarbonate. And in our body, the major proportion of your proton, that is H plus, is liberated by the metabolic actions, the food we take. So it is always acid which is being in excess in the body. So we need to get rid of this and we need to always reabsorb bicarbonate so that we have an alkali reserve in the body. So this is the two important thing which we should keep in our mind. So where does this acid comes from? We are producing more amount of acid. We are not at all producing bases. So the acid which we are uh, getting in our body is mainly from the food uh, which contains more or less amount of the acid. By the metabolism of the lipid, your fatty acids and the proteins, your cellular metabolism which is uh, ultimately giving you carbon dioxide which is contributing to form carbonic acid and ultimately protons. So in this way, we are considering, if, if we see the body's physiology, it is always getting more amount of H plus and HCO3 is not produced uh, to that extent where H plus is produced.